بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our next episode of Fawaid al-Balaya wal-Mihan Understanding the benefits of trials and tribulations Shaykh Al-Aiz ibn Abd al-Salam he continues explaining in his book that one of the other benefits of trials and tribulations is developing the quality of at-tadarru' عند الدعاء Tadarru' means to humble yourself when you're making dua, it very much connects to the two previous qualities or the two previous lessons that we learned. In episode number one, we learned about lowering ourselves and recognizing Allah's greatness. In episode number two, we learned about being sincere and continuously turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in, in today's reading through the book, he highlights how taking these two things together is now the third benefit to highlight in our journey through this book. That to develop this level of sincerity and humility in your dua. He gives the example in Surah Al-Isra where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He highlights بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّا That when you are afflicted with a calamity in the middle of the ocean, who else do you turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I want you guys to notice that he gives a very similar example to our previous example, this level of sincerity, right? But he's now extending the sincerity to humility, humbling yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleading in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives another example of Surah Al-An'am, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ تَدْعُونَهُ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيًا Tell them, who is going to save you from the darknesses of the ocean as you reach out and you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility and fear and awe that there's nothing and no one that can help you at that moment. I really, the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives of the darknesses of the ocean is such a pertinent and such a valuable example, a beautiful analogy. If you've ever been in the middle of the ocean at night, then you know how dark it is. Maybe you've taken an international flight and you traveled at night and you've looked outside of the window of the plane and for miles, you see nothingness. It's just darkness for miles and miles and miles. Imagine you get stuck there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a very similar reality for those who are misguided in Surah An-Nur where he says, ظُلُمَاتٌ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْض Darknesses, layers of darkness is one on top of another. إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا So much so that if you were to pull your hand out, you would not even be able to pull, you would not even be able to see your hand. Imagine yourself in that situation. What does that look like? What does that feel like? To be in true and complete darkness. And what does that dua look like? What level of humility do you approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What level of uh, pride do you still have at that moment? None. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufya. If you want to truly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, then make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tadarru', with that humility, with recognizing your weakness, wa khufya, and quietly. This is the secret for dua. As a matter of fact, one of the ulama once explained that having this tadarru', having this humility, having this pleading and recognizing your weakness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, this quality of tadarru', he explains, the scholar explains, this is the only quality that is absolutely necessary for your dua to be accepted. And he gives the example of none other than Iblis. You're thinking to yourself, how? Iblis, the devil himself, how is this the case? He explains, he says, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares with us the dua of Iblis. 
And the dua of Iblis ends up getting accepted. Where he says, Rabbi anzirni ila yubathun. Ya Allah, allow me to live until the day of judgment. And the ulama explain how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the dua of Iblis? And they explain one of the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach you and I is that the only quality necessary for your dua to be accepted and the most important quality for your dua to be accepted is recognizing how that thing could never come to you except by Allah. To the extent that even when Iblis makes dua in that way, even his dua was accepted. So what about the believer? How should our dua be? Is this how I'm actually making dua? When I'm making dua to pass an exam, when I'm making dua for a spouse, when I'm making dua for whatever it is that I'm making dua for, anything that I need help with, any trial or tribulation that I'm going through. How is my dua? Does my dua have that true humility and recognizing that only Allah can pull me out of this situation? This is why the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they used to say that from wisdom in your dua is to not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something specific, but rather to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best thing in that matter. For example, if someone is asking for a spouse, it's better for you to say, Ya Allah, bring me a spouse that is excellent for me, that you know is excellent for me. And if it's someone in particular, then to ask Allah, Ya Allah, if you know this thing is good for me, then make it easy for me. If you know this thing is not good for me, then don't allow it to happen for me. And to truly ask Allah for the best. With this way, you open the door to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, uh, you're humbling yourself in front of Allah, telling Allah, asking Allah, pleading to Allah that, Ya Allah, I don't know what's good for me. I don't know what's best for me. I don't know how to get out of this situation. I don't know what door to take to help my family. I don't know where my success is. But what I do know is only you can help me. That I know. That level of humility, that level of vulnerability, that's a good translation for tadarra, to be vulnerable with Allah. To be vulnerable, to, to recognize that, Ya Allah, I'm the weak one. Ya Allah, you're the one that can open every door. That level of vulnerability and humility is one of the very valuable lessons that you can learn from trials and tribulations. Because in that moment of difficulty, in that moment where you feel like no one can help you but Allah, you do make dua in that way. You make dua believing that only Allah can help you. But the lesson is to try to take that feeling and to place it in every single one of the places where we make dua. To recognize that only Allah can help you at every moment of your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease any of our difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us excellence in this life and excellence in the next life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true obedient servants to Him that recognize His greatness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us in thanking Him, in remembering Him, and in worshiping Him perfectly. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.